what is going on you guys welcome back to the channel hope you're having a great day morning noon night whatever it is for you guys hope you're having the best day possible now guys today we're gonna be getting back into some loot no nine so guys we've talked about them tyrannids we've talked about the votan we've talked about the Necrons. So, I think it's well deserved that we finally talk about the orcs. Ugh. I mean, look at that face, guys. That's that's a face only a mother can love. I mean, I know we've talked a little bit about them from the Battle of Hell's Reach, but I feel like they deserve a... Uh, a little deeper dive. I mean, guys, just look. What? What is this? Look at this guy. What? So, with that being said, guys, we're going to jump right on into this. Looting 09. War is live. Ready? In the grim darkness of the future, there is only war. The orcs are the pinnacle of creation. For them, the great struggle is won. They have evolved a society. Who are we to judge them? We, Eldar, who have failed, are the humans on the road to ruin. Because we sought answers to question, and Wark wouldn't even bother to ask. One of the most fearsome, savage, insidious, at me. I had and most well-established races in the 41st millennium. They lack any empathy even toward their own race, and they exist as a genetically engineered creation of instinct and a DNA-coded sense of purpose. They are created battle. for one task and one collective goal only, to wage unending war. war. The Orcs are one of the History older races in the 41st millennium, along with the Eldar, being created by the Old Ones. It looks like the he's then having a good time. Quark would later become what are now known as the race Orc. of Orcs. Orcs. The Eldar were a higher form of design, with them possessing many levels of high intelligence. The Orcs are their exact opposite, working on pure they genetic know. instinct. Orcs and greenskins in general, though, are not born from sexual reproduction. They're rather grown They're from spores. And all orcs are spores. grown from these same spores and fungus, be they lowly See, snotlings I, I and Gretchen or full-blown orc warriors. Once a planet becomes infected with orc fungus, either by chance or invasion, it'll likely never be free again having to Probably forever not. defend against the unrelenting green menace. This infection is giant? often likened to something like a terminal disease. Once a world is contaminated, Every time it will I see be that. a case yeah. of when, it just reminds me of like orc it will eventually wither and die. Orcs are enemies to all throughout the galaxy, but despite yeah. their crude and instinctive driven nature, they should never be underestimated. Defense to an orc assault Smart. can seem Smart. almost hopeless from the outset for some human worlds. With all their strength and power that they can wield, to fight the orcs is nothing other than a battle of attrition. A slow grinding down of morale and willpower. Take one step forward, defense against two any steps back. From the green two steps forward, only three steps back. Only buoys their spirits and emboldens them further to attack again with more fury and more enthusiasm. They won't relent, yeah. they won't slow or surrender. There is no respite, there is no escape. No the planet respite. infected by the no orc escape. menace is a doomed world. Orcs possess a powerful genetic sense of being 
to fight, to conquer, and to never surrender under any circumstances. Their strategies, if you could call them that, are usually unsurprisingly simple and unashamedly direct. To overwhelm the enemy with sheer weight of numbers or absolute weapon superiority numbers or absolute weapon superiority, to never show their enemies mercy, to smash and obliterate all who oppose them under an unrelenting green tide of ultra violence. They wage war with yeah. machines that defy logic and technical understanding, and they care little for strategic gain, are seen to be just as likely to slaughter one another as they are the enemy. But most especially if an enemy is in their sights. Orcs are often reported to, for example, skewer one another with swords and other melee weapons just so as to gain a killing blow to an opponent crush their kin with their own vehicles with little if any regard and use heavy weaponry without thought to such a thing as friendly casualties. They Imperial forces are often left to wonder how does one battle an enemy that defies no, all like logic and, and their down. answer is usually exterminatus. <laughs> exterminatus. Um, no thank you. Don't like Yorks, as mentioned previously, are an engineered species. They were created some 60 million years ago by the Old Ones, who also created the Eldar and seeded life across the galaxy. Yep, we Yorks talked about that last night. were created, night. as were the Eldar, to wage war against the Necrons, the ancient enemy of the Old Ones. The Necrons! would refer to their creators as the Brain Boys. The brainy now, boys. while the Eldar were made to be highly intelligent with extremely powerful psychic powers so as to best counter the Necron and Catan threat, the Orcs, then Quark, however, were the antithesis of the Eldar. Muscle-bound, irrationally aggressive, and rarely showing signs of advanced intelligence. Aye. They're driven Aye. by designed instinct. Orcs, you see, require war and brutality as others might need food and water to sustain them. To and that's why war core and loves them. Savagery is not a desire. It's, core. it's a physical requirement to their identity. And this is why they often fight amongst themselves as much as they would any outside races. While they do possess advanced tech, it is maintained by a class known as Odd Boys, who, as with all the other works, are driven more by just a gut feeling, a born knowledge, than a true awareness of what they're actually doing. Unlike the Imperium what? of the 41st millennium, Born the Odd Boys knowledge? possess the instinct of skill to not only maintain, but more importantly, to actually develop technology, if you can really call it such. This skill isn't learned or researched by any conventional sense of tech development, it's instead bound into their genetics, as with all things Orc, most of their skills are instinctive. The best what? way to really envisage this is for them to just smash things together until by some miracle it just works a kind of deadly galactic scrap heap challenge if you will orcs don't possess any random if evolutionary works, psychic works. powers as humans might and say you know evolutionary if it's the old ones which have seeded life perhaps it's by design but nonetheless the psychic power with orcs is comically random and again being by design from their creators the old ones this bizarre psychic power allows for orcs to literally will something to be true that if just enough of them believe it then it will be so for example the classic painting their war machines a certain color may like when the war boss or the the big strong orc says hey i filled up the gas tank but the little orc said no you didn't but the big orc said yeah i did and even though it it didn't really have gas, but it still works. What? So, if enough of them just think they're gonna win, they're gonna win? Somebody. Elaborate a little bit more. Or maybe he will. We'll see. Imbue it with a power, like being more powerful with explosives, or just to go faster. Just because enough orcs will believe it to be so with the proximity of numbers of them means it will become a reality. This enables orcs really? to achieve things like space travel, even controlling space hulks and bringing them into real space under orc modified control. 
a terrifying thought. As well as bringing huge rock. war machines to a battle and it's field, gonna fly. all of these things, by all rational and logic, should be outside their of realm of skill and possibility. And this genetic trait is also why orc technology, whilst essentially being just a random collection of things smashed Scraps. together, will become devastatingly fearsome war machines in the hands of orcs, but then would just as easily return to being useless junk in the hands of other races. It's a clever solution to the threat of your war gear falling into the hands of an enemy, and again, this is by design of the old ones. Conversely Smart. though, if orc numbers dwindle, then it can be potentially counterproductive. Unlike other them. races who can wield immense power reliably, even in singular or small numbers, any number of examples would suit from, say, Imperial Assassins to Grey Knights and Eldar Wraith Knights. The more or less of their own race will not have a bearing on their success, their strength or their functionality of their tech. Not so much with the Orcs. The awareness of this Orc psychic functionality came into general understanding through the Imperium of Man's tech priests, who through their own cultivated belief in a machine spirit that inhabits technology and that this machine spirit serves mankind at the command of the machine god. This imbued them with a perspective and point you of reference pray. that enabled them to see the pray truth hard, boy. of how orcs were able to bring technology to the fore that should have been far out of their reach. Yeah. Lastly, the orc race's anatomy is particularly interesting. The old ones Apparently. obviously wanted the orcs or croc to be functional as a warrior race, a biological war machine. But Give before you have muscles. the ability to wage war, you still have to fulfill any life form's basic needs, like food, sustenance, water, food, water, air. the basics of life. The old ones in their wisdom imbued the orcs with a powerful genetic advantage here right. on top of their already many powerful genetic traits. For one, when it comes to food and liquid intake, the orcs can use their own growing fungus as a food source. They'll happily eat pretty much anything though when it comes to meat and the lower orc forms of snotlings will Tastes cultivate like chicken. this fungus food. The more interesting elements of their biology though is that orcs really are something like a symbiotic animal fungus hybrid, making them partly eukaryotic in nature. Now fungus was historically part of the plant okay. kingdom, but fungi lack chlorophyll, the green pigment in plants that converts light energy to chemical energy. They also have other distinct structural and physiological oh, no, features and are so classed separately from plants. Now, it has been suggested that orcs' green skin and their blood could directly contain chlorophyll so as to allow orcs to actually photosynthesize as a plant does and thereby provide Very orcs with some energy so they can survive longer without actual food. Now, the only problem, this makes absolutely no sense for the reasons that I just mentioned. Fungi don't have chlorophyll. So if orcs grow and were cultivated as a plant-based life form why they got in the part, this would actually be more reasonable, skin. but they're not. They're grown yeah. from fungi. So apparently the generator Magos biologists of the Imperium should actually do some more microscopic comparisons before they reach their conclusions. However, it's also suggested that orcs in their blood and bodies may contain some sort of algae, and that this might be actually what's responsible for the coloration and then also possibly the ability to photosynthesize to a degree. This yeah. is a more reasonable concept, but as with all alien races, information is pretty scarce pretty and speculation limited. is abound. So this one point aside, other orc anatomical guessing. interests are that an orc's animal fungal symbiosis means that they actually contain less critical organs than say a human, meaning orcs can afford to take wounds and damage that actually might kill a lesser creature but it will allow them to continue functioning. Part of the reason they are so surely haphazard when in battle, almost careless, is their bodies are essentially designed to be simple, practical, and operate even when catastrophically when, damaged. Which when rings you true of everything we know about their purpose off. and their design. They were designed to be a biological war machine and nothing more. Orc growth though is a strange thing, whereby orcs will grow according to, I suppose, unsurprisingly, how violent they are. They'll generally continue to grow at a varying rate dependent on how successful they are in combat, be that versus other orcs or their enemies, and then their growth will stagnate again. Well, that would be nice. Every orcs battle you win, the bigger you get. Orcs live across a wide and scattered number of worlds throughout the galaxy. 
some in a state of war, That's some fair. in endless skirmishes, and some dominating worlds ruling them as overlords, with often human slaves obeying their brutal command. The Orcs' expansion was really an accident, as best known in Orc history, of course it was. This is why even now their settlements are often random with no real pattern, focus or direction. The Eldar claim Orcs have become part of reality itself. Mankind as well scouted, probed the galaxy, all of the known galaxy and everywhere that they explored they found the Orc. The galaxy at this point is contaminated beyond any hopes of cleansing and salvaging it from the Can't Orc filter that because of water, the sir. random and haphazard fashion by which Orcs discover, explore and inhabit the galaxy, they have splintered into various communities, if you want to call them that. These communities are usually just a confederacy of tribes, either loosely or under a warlord. Each tribe is a random bunch of orcs just smashed together with clans and various mechs and materials. It's a mishmash of violence and constructivity. It's best not to overthink it. It bears no resemblance to any ordered sense of a community or a society. Ah, orcs have known so of like mankind the and their emperor the for some time. They know that humans worship the emperor and have seen his shrines and symbols across human society. And they pay society. the man respect. They regard the emperor as strength. the god of the humans. Yeah. And this is easy for orcs to understand as they have their own gods. Even though they see humans as weak, they do respect the emperor as a powerful war god. Yeah. From the orc point Look of what view, he did. the emperor is a constant warlord to the humans. They see him everywhere in human society. And so do the orcs, this widespread war god must surely be powerful and therefore to be respected. Or Some orcs speak he? of a legend where the emperor would appear as a manifestation challenging the orc Go check out to battle the video and still. And see. Despite this, he's also seen to the orcs as a confusing figure. Why he would command his human servants to take on so many pointless tasks when they could be just fighting makes no sense to the orcs. The human's constant failures or stress and despair seem to underline this confusion for orcs. Fight. Hence why they often use the word uman blah, 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 as a blah. slang for things that are pointless, impractical or just counterproductive. The orcs' attitude to life is fairly simple and therefore they cope with the realities of the universe far better than many other races. With no overarching goals life. and day-to-day -day concerns being really only Battle. whether to build or fight Hillage. or eat. It's quite a stress-free life, eat. especially when you have no fear eat, of your own eat, mortality eat. from an orc's point of view. Generally speaking, they don't try to influence their own destiny, they don't try to apportion blame unless it's some stupid Gretchen looking to get his head bashed in. Their hatred is spread equal among their enemies and their allies, and if they fail, they feel no guilt. Try again in a different way. Unlike humanity, chaos has yeah. little to any fear or effect with orcs. Their minds are hardwired to their simple day-to-day -day activities, so dreams of power and turning against each other for some cause is not something that's likely to spread very insidiously through a tribe of orcs. They're probably too busy already killing each other over some far more trivial matter. And because of their simple that's and my shoe. speaking stress free no, lifestyle, my shoe. it leaves little psychic stress by which chaos can actually invade them may look upon the orcs as evil either due to their near mindless savagery or their endless conquest of worlds this is That's actually pretty evil. ignorant perspective yeah. lumping orcs in alongside dark forces like chaos or dark elder is really a disservice to the orcs because they yeah. exist by design and they, they have become made. simply very effective at existing they do they what they their do instincts and yeah. these are hard coded into their very being in evil, their i don't think so but brutally savage Definitely. It's also yeah. often mistaken that perhaps if one were to see Chaos and Orc fighting on the same battlefield that they are somehow an alliance. In reality, it's probably more so. simply that the Orcs just see them as other fighters on the field who they'll probably turn to deal with in short order once the nearer enemy to them it's has been done. battered into submission. And when it comes to trade, Orcs strangely do have this as part of their culture and they use their teeth literally their teeth. It's actually a comically natural solution to economic inflation because orcs go through their teeth similarly to something like a shark. They replace they and regrow rooms. them frequently. Orc teeth also degrade over time so it's impossible to stockpile them. This keeps prices in orc trading constant and ensures that all orcs have access to regular currency and commodities. And besides if you're running short on teeth it's no problem you can just go smash some other orcs face in and get yourself some more. Orc language is deemed as being low gothic. 
and orcs are able to communicate with others but at a very basic level. Orc script though is very different altogether and it's actually written in glyphs. The core of this is simple clan indicators and these are then adapted using phonetic symbols which can form some of the key orc words. It's pretty simple though because it's just generally not needed by the orc race. They function by design, not structure or organization. They have no need to keep records well, yeah, why, or data why, why, why or any other that? useful societal function for writing and literature. These aren't important for orcs. The orc way oh. is one of near anarchy. They're ruled by traditions and understandings much more than laws and governing. And it's pretty simple. No orc politics. society is about conflict. Strong orcs will rise up, weak ones will work or are killed. And they in turn benefit from the leadership of the stronger orcs. If an orc tribe is beaten by a stronger one, the survivors gain the leadership of a better tribe, making them stronger. stronger There's no rules term. about a tribe's size, location, or purpose. It's just the rough grouping of orcs in a given area at a given time. And each is led by a warlord whose authority is pretty loose, giving just maybe enough rule to prevent all the orcs from turning on each other. A tribe could be a few hundred strong, a few million. The literal numbers are not important. Large tribes are usually split into smaller groups of warbands which are ruled by war bosses. And these warbands are usually a few hundred strong, creating smaller forces ready to battle wherever it's necessary, or whenever they feel like it. While orcs will belong to a tribe, Any they town. also will belong to Our a clan. Town. Now, a tribe may break apart into parts or form new ones, but clans are enduring and remain a reasonable constant from an orc point of view. Okay. Some of the most noted orc clans are as follows. Now, the Bad Moons, these are some of the most wealthy orcs they're essentially what could be regarded as the team. merchant caste in orc society. The Blood Axes were the first orc clan to encounter the Imperium of Man, and they adopted human okay. tactics of camouflage, albeit slightly bright camouflage. And usually for orcs, they'll and sometimes actually hats. retreat, having picked this up also from humans, but they'll usually return, and in greater numbers. This clan will sometimes even trade with humans, even having been known to work as mercenaries for them, which sounds crazy, but maybe uncomfortably necessary. The Death Skulls are essentially looters and scavengers. They appropriate battlefield loot to make themselves stronger, including Imperial War Gear. The Evil Sons are orcs who are committed to speed and whatever makes them go fast speed. should be as loud as possible. They also love flying vehicles like fighters, fighter bombers, and they usually seem to wear at least some red material, because as all orcs do know, you better be praying that those were goths, sir. The Goths are simply tough orcs. They're the biggest, the most brutal. The they thrive on battle more so than others, and they're driven by the blood fury of close quarter battle. Snake bites worship ancient traditions over advanced tech. They protect themselves with war paint and may even choose to remain as feral orcs instead of developing their skills with mechs and guns. Finally, the freebooters. These are the pirates. These orcs are notorious thieves, preying upon anything or anyone that they find. They'll kill anybody they see. They'll seize upon, haul their booty back to their hidden bases. Is that Captain so Jack Sparrow? Orc religion. Whether intentional or not, the old ones ended up imbuing the orc with a religious sensibility. They worship their two gods, Gork and Mork. One is brutal and cunning, and the other is cunning and brutal. Gork the orc gods and are Mork? the center of orc energy. They drive and power their whole culture. The best idea we have of how the orcs perceive their gods is in their mechs. These are the physical manifestation of their orc gods and drive their followers into stupefying frenzies of violence and bloodlust. They're also seen in armoured battle suits Gorkonaut and Morknaut. These armoured suits are seen as idols and the orcs piloting these suits gripped with visions of their gods urging them to fight on harder, faster, more brutally and inevitably to meet their demise on the battlefield. While orcs often talk of Gork and Mork as separate entities, it's even possible they are one perhaps with two sides or provide different visions to different orcs. Still, it doesn't stop the orcs from often favouring one or the other being known as either Gorkers or Morkers. Gorkers one figure in the Imperium Morkers. knows more of Gork and Mork than most others. He is Vulcan, the Primarch of the Salamanders. He is what's known as a Perpetual in the 40k universe. Essentially, he's an immortal. He can regenerate from almost any injury, even something like being vaporized. One of the Salamanders? Vulcan disappeared after the Horus Heresy, I didn't but he know would that. appear some 1500 years later on the Imperial world of Caldera to aid in defending it against a massive orc invasion. Now, though he died many times over, he would regenerate and appear again on the front lines. 
the Imperial Inquisition requested he lead a mission to destroy the Orc war boss known as the Beast. But the Vulcan beast. refused until Caldera was saved. Bah. With the aid of Imperial forces, Can't Vulcan saved army. Caldera from destruction and would return to Terra, gathering an Imperial force to Ulanor to the homeworld of the Beast. Vulcan would lead the final charge into the beast's massive temple gargant, confronting the war boss there. During a powerful struggle, the Primarch and the war boss would fall into the gargant's power generator. And Vulcan created the detonation in the generator, so powerful it killed not only the beast, but a massive chain reaction, shattering the temple gargant and obliterating them. Vulcan presumed dead by the Imperium, but the Salamander Space Marines still hunt for him, believing him indestructible and that he will return to them. And the point of this story was what Vulcan would witness in the heart of the Orc Gargant when what? exposed to its powerful generator. What he witnessed? he witnessed the raw energy that was the culmination of all the Orcs' warg, and he would witness the origins the of the warg? Orcs and their gods Gork and Mork battling one another at the beginning of time. This powerful vision allowed Vulcan to just understand wrestling. the true nature of the Orcs, how they are a race of evolution He's through going experimental for a double leg anarchy. I'm the hand of Gork and Mort. They sent me to rouse up the boys to crush and kill because the boys for God's not there for. Yeah, I can't. Now, the Orcs have been an ever-existing threat to the Imperium of Man, but towards the end of the 41st millennium, there's been seen an explosion in Orc Warg. Now, the Orc Warg. Dominion, or Empire, marks the regions in the galaxy currently controlled by the Xenos. Some what planets are now completely controlled by the Orc race, where others are in an unending state of brutal, nightmarish, and near-hopeless war. Orcs have been heard to keep under control some of the local populace, creating a prison workforce who are kept in unbearable, exhausting and dangerous conditions, abiding by their uncaring savage slave masters. Most of these prisoners will be unlikely to ever know any other life than being subject now to the Orcs' brutal will. The Orcs will at any time also control random, isolated worlds, as well as rampaging hordes that sweep through the galaxy, battling all that they encounter. They also have been found inhabiting ancient space hulks. Now, as an aside, a space hulk is simply a term given by the Imperium of Man to any ancient wrecks of space vessels. Ah. These hulks are no mere freighters or hulks. even warships, but giant ancient vessels, possibly from the early exploration of mankind or even lost in the Age of Strife. They can be so massive as to that even that maintain either. their own gravity, or in rare cases, atmosphere. The hulks can often what? appear and disappear, transitioning between the warp and normal space. This makes exploring How? them extremely dangerous. As well as orcs, they often can host other dangers like the vile Xenos Tyranids, who have been found often using these hulks as breeding grounds for their gene stealers. Even Chaos Space Marines can sometimes be found there, either searching for ancient tech or preparing to launch hidden attacks against the Imperium. While there is great potential reward in searching a space hulk, there is also immense danger, coupled with danger. the ambient danger of the own hulk's instability. Uh. As such, searching these vessels is left to the elite warriors of the Imperium and the Space Marines, the Space Marine Terminators. They are some of the most heavily armoured units within a yeah. Space Marine chapter, and their ancient Terminator armour enables them to carry out the extremely dangerous task of searching the hulks. Yeah, isn't that Terminator armour what they used to use for the starship refuelers and they just lost was it they lost the information to continue to build it or they just don't have the resources to build it anymore and that's why only the space marines have it and not the actual starship refuelers that that die because they have that crappy job Somebody let me know. I, th I think that's how it goes, but I could be wrong. Let me know. Now, humans have explored extensively in the 41st millennium, and they have found orcs to inhabit every corner of the galaxy. Orcs. And this seems unlikely to change now or in the future. The Waga. orcs are not a race of nice reason drink. or diplomacy or even needs. They exist as a genetically engineered creation of instinct and a DNA coded sense of being. They spread across the galaxy more like a plague. Than conquerors. Like this plague of war is often referred to as the Warg. 
or conflicts usually will remain localized to their own planets or objectively speaking small raids to worlds inhabited by other races or other orc or pirate like raids on passing ships again as with most things that orcs do there's usually not a grand plan here so don't overthink it a wag though is a different happening altogether when numbers of orcs reach a critical a mass they feel a need to migrate to form a crusade of apocalyptic aggression that will sweep through a region destroying anything in its path. Numbers of orcs are beyond estimation then they'll swarm through a segmentum of space exterminating everything in their path. You could liken this to a locust plague yeah, or a viral pandemic until it eventually burns itself out. A wag also refers to a psychic field Ugh, that affects viral orc psyche. Pandemic. This is again as with all things orc an instinctive state enabling them to make simple observations of understanding. This applies to everything from designation of seniority which again don't overthink that it's usually more akin to who is just bigger and therefore more right. All orcs generate this double psychic bigger, field by I'm default, more right. which binds them together and helps their ramshackle culture function. The more orcs that are present, the stronger this shared psychic field becomes, and this is amplified through sheer numbers, or if they say are enjoying a really good bit of battle and smashing their enemies' faces in. The warg helps drive them, and you could think of it as being akin to momentum, where past a point is just going to increase. A warg can begin on a small scale, sometimes as a small it's like individual who may have the some activation point, the activation threshold. Once it gets inspired it, to share with others by smashing their heads in until they get it. Or if he's imbued with a sense of tech skill, maybe he's going to create some giant gargant war machine that gets the blood and hype of his fellow orcs running high. The rumors of war and coming carnage spread like wildfire through the orcs, only exacerbating this sense of warg. An orc war boss, who is simply a big powerful orc in command of his tribe, will usually rise to their aspired position through just basically beating the hell out of all around them until fellow orcs just get it that he's the biggest and the strongest. Yeah. His decisions will be enforced by a ruling caste of orcs known as knobs, and these are again a bigger than normal orc who will surely knobs. remind those below them of the fact at every opportunity with some I'm casual bigger violence. Than you. A war boss in a time of warg will assert himself through unsurprisingly more savage, senseless violence towards his fellow orcs. When oh. a war boss has created enough blunt trauma to be recognized as a powerful boss, he'll then be deemed an orc warlord. As his status spreads, more and more clans will come under his control, growing an unrelenting green mass of aggression. The mechs and brain boys will build ever more Cabrini outlandish boys. creations absurd in their brutality and genius in their creativity. Vicious war machines belching smoke and oil, poisonous vapors, acrid smoke, mobile fortresses, titanic war engines created from basically random scrap metal and abandoned twisted now cannibalized war engines. As the war boss grows ever stronger toward becoming the warlord he will subsume his challenger's armies with many of the orcs now seeking the sense of warg with a bloodthirsty insanity. Mech boys raise towers of warg and gargants will start to be seen. Gargants are the equivalent of imperial titans and so represent a world ending level of firepower. These gargants are idols or seen as avatars to the orc race as manifestations of their gods Gork and Mork. They are merciless weapon Man. assemblies of sheer destruction. Gargants form no standard pattern of design as does barely anything in the orc way of creation. They are instead a random collection of parts and combinations of cannibalized war machines. And this excitable and chaotic nature of these builds makes their weapon systems unreliable. Their whole design is haphazard and probably about as dangerous to the crew as to their targets on their battlefield. A clear difference between most orc war machinery and other races in the galaxy is they don't utilize guidance ah. systems commonly. Loons they also carry large crews of music choices. and the lower smaller race of over there. And they operate these war machines as a team, passing down orders as you might imagine a steamship of say the 19th century, calling down orders to the engine room and so on. Gretchens are significantly physically smaller than orcs and so they're used to repair systems on the go by crawling into tight spaces. Gargants are usually weaker in terms of armor compared to Imperial Titans and relatively shorter range of weaponry. However, they're still difficult to destroy because of the compacted, dense nature of their construction. 
There is one rarer variety above a normal Gargant known aptly as a Mega Gargant. And this is essentially a mobile fortress running on tracks. Imperial tales tell of orcs laying siege to cities, spending even as long as 18 months to construct what? these colossal machines of war. Returning and to the apocalyptic warg, the continual swelling work. of orc mobs starts to reach a critical what? mass. Ships and transport vessels are smashed together, and the orc armies reach a point of no return. This wave of violence now comes crashing down as the orc armies overflow with bloodlust, descending into battles that consume entire worlds. The Gargan idols further trigger the instinctive drives of the orc clans and tribes who would do anything to outdo each other's destructive capabilities. Mm. At some point, this wave of fury and raging violence reaches its boiling point and the orcs begin to gather their great warg army. Wow, the ground garbage. shaking under the weight of tracked vehicles and striding walkers, the skies turn black from flyers, belching out blackened exhausts, and their ragged banners of brutality raising high atop these rusting, illogical contraptions of war. Orc wars are very decentralized yeah. and have very little true coherency, even with a powerful war boss or warlord overseeing things. Various fragmented factions will exist in a warg, cults of speed, for example, whose principle is to go fast. Essentially speed freaks who love the thunderous roar of an engine, and if they can shoot some guns at the same time, all the better. Probably driving over and crushing some of their own kind in the process. Storm no boys deal. are elite shock troops who strap huge rockets on their back to make sure they're first into battle, charging with no thought Ooh. much to the consequences. And this is actually frowned upon by many orcs as I'm they coming, charging mama. under their own I'm feet coming to home. get physically into the battle. Still, seeing a Storm Boy's volatile rocket pack malfunction go spinning off into an exploding disaster, certainly killing the pilot in the process, is yeah. great entertainment for the comrades on the ground. And then it's of course you've got the Mad sides. Boys. These are orcs overwhelmed by the psychic energy of Warg. And they also can occur when clans of orcs inhabit a planet and have to develop their own technology over generations of spawned orcs. Either way, mad boys don't that coexist well with their kin. Time. They're essentially best described as feral, which is saying something by orc standards. These feral, crazed orcs are also known as nutters, mm. and they're grouped together into squads who will either be a secret tool to success when unleashed on the enemy, or a hindrance when they accidentally slaughter any fellow orcs they happen upon. Once combat begins, mad boys can still be some of the most savage fighters to an orc foe, or fellow orc alike, ripping them to pieces. Still, they're just as likely to sit in a whimpering huddle like and to move overwhelmed face, by psychic confusion. Only a mother no can orc know. can tell exactly how they're going to behave, and making them an unpredictable and extremely dangerous force to bring onto the battlefield. Along with their crudely smashed together spaceships and space hulk infestations, orcs have even been reported to convert asteroids into massive space fortresses, known as the uncreatively titled rocks. The orc species is one of the most rocks. adept at making the best of their surrounding materials, and this is the genius and danger of their design. What? The old ones created the orcs with only two things in mind, making them deadly Battle. and to make them near impossible to exterminate. Orcs are okay. a plague upon the galaxy to be sure, but not because of their skill in battle or because they spread insidious ideologies, but simply because they're you so difficult to truly eradicate. Humanity, for all of its technology and experience, often must resort to planetary exterminatus to be truly sure of destroying an orc infestation. Orcs defeat their enemies by overwhelming them, or wearing them down to the point of collapse through continuous losses in personnel and materials, simply by attrition. Orcs operate from a sheer antithesis of ordinary warfare. Usually any force will seek out decisive victories, utilizing minimal resources and seeking to limit casualties. Orcs, on the other hand, seek no limitation in casualties or resource management. They have no control over this, but throw to burn the as hard whole and as kitchen fast as sink possible. at them. And even when defeated, they will return to grind down whatever crumbling defenses remain of their enemy. The war. Now, there are many individual stories and tales of orc worlds and bosses, as there are within the Imperium and its various leaders, captains, and general history. In orc culture and history, you can't speak of the orcs without mentioning the warlord, Garskull Mag Og Thraka. Garskull He's an orc warlord of Thraka. and is an immense symbol of everything orc. Now, despite orcs being generally an anonymous mass of anarchy, he stands out as a powerful leader. 
He's commanded multiple campaigns and crushed most, if not all, in his sights, be they Imperial, Eldar, or Chaos. Smashed the metal skulls of the Necron into brittle scrap. He has hey. influence above that of any ordinary guild, and he's often described as a prophet what, whatever of their your name gods. Is. He travels the galaxy, subjugating, slaughtering, and burning the enemies of the Orc. His vision is to wage a warg so immense as to summon the Orc gods out of the Immaterium and into the physical realm, and he extends their will. Not for the Imperium, I But his I beginnings guess. were nothing of note, just another Orc bashing in other Orc's brains to climb up the ranks. And originating on a planet known as Urk, originally Urkles, founded by Urkles. humans during the Dark Age of Technology. Humanity prospered here, rich yeah. in mineral wealth, and with easy warp tides flowing for space travel, it was an excellent trade hub. And then Lights and noise they lost attract it all. attention. Resources make good mechs, and the orcs would become aware. Attacking with a voracious Ooh, assault, the shiny. orcs would raise the planet before riding back into the warp tides. As with nearly all orc assaults, the departure is not as clean as it appears to be. They'd leave behind fungal spores, and the orcs would return everywhere. Other species would periodically form outposts on the planet. Sometimes the orcs would rise up, other times not. Sometimes they'd be destroyed, sometimes not. It wouldn't be until the Great Crusade of Mankind, though, that any humans would return here in numbers. The Dark Angel Space Marine Legion would lay claim to the world, and for 2,000 years, humanity would build, mine, and establish a functioning order on the reinstated world of Urkles. Did the spores grow? That was until around the 32nd millennium what when happened? a great orc warg swept through the system. Humans were overwhelmed again and evacuated, fleeing into the warp. But its tides destabilized, and Urkles would be cut off and not easily reached by outside influence again for about 8,000 years. Dang. The orc tribes, however, remained battling one another and fighting pew, over the human pew, ruins pew, that pew, remained. Pew, pew. A state of genuine attrition was reached with various warbands fighting over ever-diminishing resources, none of them able to unite yeah, under a single leader. Think then that's gonna be came Gazgol. One thing the Imperium had learned about the Orcs, though, was that their wargs could be quashed if detected early enough. The Imperium would begin to deploy observation posts Wait. so as to best detect and monitor Orc numbers and activity. And the Dark Angels monitored this as well as they routinely monitored human populations for potential recruiting planets. After the warp tides had yeah. calmed, the Dark recruiting Angels were planets. able to establish one such outpost on Urk so as to monitor Urk. this well occupied Orc planet. The Orcs, however, desperate for any loot and resources, managed to discover this observation post and it was quickly overrun. At this time, Gazgul was just a Goth's trooper in a warband, and during the frenzy to claim the base, he would be shot in the head by a bolter shell, a devastating injury that would shatter his skull and pulp a section of his brain. Staggering back to his feet with immense toughness, he drew the respect of orcs around him, especially Goths. Despite being a physical wreck, staggering and stumbling, his blood and brain spilling out into his own hands, they eventually found their way to a dock who would perform what I guess orcs deemed to be an operation. As Surgery. is often the way with orcs, this was less a repair and more an improvement, an augmentation, and probably a bit of an experiment. Gazgul found that his skull and brain were now strengthened with bionics, squig sinew and adamantium plating. These physical alterations were great to be sure, but nothing compared to the vision he would see awakening from this augmentation. He would see a vision from Gork and Mork themselves to oh, lead orcs on the greatest, Nordgast. most destructive and carnage reaping warg that there had ever been. It was his sole core belief that he had been in direct contact with his gods and that he was the chosen leader and the executor of their commands. That or his brain got pulped by a bolt gun round through the skull. Either way, his Either purpose way. was clear and his eh. resolve strengthened. And as is often the way in orc culture, the whys and wherefores are not really relevant. It's the actions that it's count, and Gazgul's actions would be notable. Yeah. Orc warlords began to fall immediately under his crushing will. The Death Skull's warlord Dregmech, with Gazgul barely minutes out of his surgery, the Death Skull's warlord would attack, unleashing a bullet storm that left Gazgul untouched. By perhaps godly intervention, Dregmat could not believe his eyes as Gazgul would stride forward, beating him into a bloody pulp, headbutting and smashing him to pieces as his mobs looked on. Some being carried away in the violence and even cheering Gazgul on, roaring from his victory, 
Gazgul declared himself the prophet of Gork and Mork, and that this was his mere beginning. All right. The word of Gazgul's brutality and power spread fast, and orcs flocked to join a band with a sense of purpose and direction, to be something more than the pitiful squabbling and clamouring for scraps that they'd become. The tales of a new boss touched by the gods with a vision for war was very appealing. His further battles with the evil suns and bad moons would be no less aggressive, but required more tactical sense, using burning fuels to shield his troops' approach or outwitting warlords through their sense of pride for their disposition, he was placed as an inevitable leader. His subjugation of other warlords continued until he stood poised to do something no other orc warlord had done in 8,000 years, unite the tribes on the planet of Urk. His domination of the planet was unquestioned, but Gazgul had set his sights far beyond bringing together the orcs inhabiting his world. His words drove the orcs to their purpose, the warg beginning to form. Their energy attracting others, void right. ships began to arrive. For the first time in centuries, mechs worked together building machines they never could have imagined previously. Oh look now guys, with the energy and the, the power of the warg, it all just worked. It was a miracle. Who what did you the do? energies flowed as I they riveted the together off. giant battle fortresses and mechs. Everything that occurred was the will of Gork and Mork, and Gazgul would declare every passing day, every achievement, every new ship arriving, proved their quest was divine. Some of the orcs, they were wondering how they were going to get so many of the orcs off the planet. They didn't have very many flyers, Just and no large ships to transport and begin their warg. Gazgul quickly silenced them. A solution would present itself. It was the will of Gork and Mork. Days later, the ever unpredictable tides of the Immaterium would shift again, and that rarest of occurrences would happen. A, a gigantic ship. ancient Space Hulk would emerge from the warp. The space Hulk. Gaskell ordered tractor cannons and harpoon rockets on the few spacecraft that they had to secure the Hulk. They couldn't guess as to how long before the warp would swallow the ancient ship, even with them holding it in place, and they needed to work fast. The orcs rushed to assist in mech construction. They crafted as many transports and war machines as possible. Once they deemed enough was enough, they crammed as many orcs into every possible space and set off. This great exodus from their backwater planet filled the skies, not without many mid-air collisions and engine failures as well to be sure. Crashing into the Space Hulk's outer hull, some managed to make their way inside, some straight on plowed into the vessel, and those with more sense sought out landing positions. The orcs soon discovered that they weren't alone on the Space Hulk, with wave after wave of demons Gladiators. spilling out of its corridors. Demons. Battling through the horrors, Gazgul and his band fought through to the center of the Hulk, where they found merged and jumbled by the warp was the ship, the Dominion. This was the vessel the humans had attempted to flee from the planet on some several thousand years ago, and seemingly it had it been swallowed it. by the warp, its human occupants devoured by the demons as they lay trapped in their vessel. The void rift that was spilling demons had to be closed, but Gazgul, after ordering his orcs to fire everything they had, was furious to discover it had no effect. His own weapon, even his own power claw, eventually with a massive headbutt and a flash of green light, that did the job, closing the demonic portal. It seems likely his latent psychic energy was what affected this in closing, but for the orcs observing, it was only further imbued their belief that this warlord was a force like no was other. The man. Gazgul now named his conquered space hulk the orc warship World Killer. Sounds like a good name. The ship would drift on for an undetermined period of time, in which the orcs would explore, loot, and generally rip off whatever they could find on board, cannibalizing the ship and using its materials to craft ever more powerful mechs and weapons. They appropriated everything they could lay their hands on and built everything they could lend their hands to. The best scrap would often lead to infighting and rivalry, all a positive thing for the orcs to keep their tensions and blood up. It would not be a quiet period though, travelling through the warp in such an unsecure vessel is dangerous and many times they'd be assaulted by further demonic incursions. And these assaults only further heightened the orcs' warg until the entire space hulk was seething with all the energies. Warg. The Space Hulk jolted and huge tremors swept across the ship. The World Killer had shifted back into real space. It's time the to do battle, boys. The emergence of the Space Hulk in the year Come on, Brady boys, we're going to do some battle. They were headed for the core planet of the star system. 
an Imperial world aptly named Armageddon. An industrial hive planet where thousands of years Doesn't of extensive like industry had left it a barren planet. wasteland with a totally collapsed ecosystem. Humans only survived in the concentrated hive cities that stood kilometers tall, and also in the Imperial military facilities stationed there. Food needed to be imported off-world and no life existed outside of the hives. It contained multiple vast manufactorums vital to munition supplies for the Astra Militarium. But with one of the most savage and relentless wargs ever seen headed straight for them, it seemed like nothing was going to be able to stop World Killer and its crew. Ah. The ship would head straight for the planet without stopping. The plan? There wasn't a plan. Ram they crashed straight into the planet. Gaskell was literally on a collision course with what? its destiny. Caught off guard, nearby Imperial fleets and the planet's defences did what they could to slow the assault, but this only chipped away at the massive space hulk that approached. <laughs> Taking minimal effective damage, it ploughed straight into the planet's polluted atmosphere, crashing with obvious devastation onto its surface. Even though many thousands of orcs would be turned to ashes on impact, this was but a tiny percentage of their total force. Ah. To the survivors, Gazgul seized this random. opportunity. It is the will of Gorka Mork that we survive, he would proclaim. The orcs now twice as pumped up, having survived their world and <laughs> crash into the planet, would be a Let's force none battle. wish to reckon with. And Gazgul quickly divided his massive army into five hordes, with leaders that he'd subdued and recruited to his cause back on Urk. They now stepped forth, millions of orc, but one voice. The human defenders weren't prepared for this. They had many forces, war gear and munitions, but the sheer scale of the violence and ferocity they were met with was of nothing they'd dreamt of in their worst nightmares, which in the 41st millennium is certainly saying something. Yeah. This was not an ordinary orc warg. This was Garsgård Thracker's warg. The orcs showed expectedly no mercy at any instance, and they defeated the humans on the wastelands with their speeders and battle Easy. wagons, ruined enemy supply lines and cut down anything that moved. And they quickly turned their attention to structures that they had never seen before. These hive cities, taller than mountains, Ooh. industry and engineering on an imperial scale. The mechs what stood in awe. So much scrap they, they would have murdered. At the first hive they encountered, despite the Imperium putting up a formidable defense at Hive Volcanus, heavily fortified, this would take all of Garskill's cunning. He had his gargants, but he wanted to take this city with orcs on the ground, scorching, burning and reaping through the trenches. The orcs would smash, crush, and break this city. Using his visionary choices of units, Gazgul crushed the human defenses quickly and on breaking the gates, unleashing a wave of infantry. His will was executed perfectly, a tall order for an orc war. Desperate humans resorted to guerrilla warfare, but despite much heroism, the orcs swept through like a plague, slaughtering and enslaving its occupants. Its manufactorums were quickly converted to orc workshops. Human slaves turned to stripping their own city every scrap of resource that could be used to fashion more orc mechs. Now on the planet of Armageddon, one human stood out from the general perception of the orcs as a weak and puny race, Commissar Sebastian Yarrick. He drew unusual respect from the Sebastian orcs, not least because he wore Mech. goth colours of the black yeah. and red, but also sporting an augmented power claw and bionic eye. This was a human the orcs could get on board with. Even more so when they learned from enslaved humans that they often feared Yarrick as much as they feared their other enemies. Yarrick known for shooting disobeying soldiers out of hand. Orcs upon seeing him in battle though were often disappointed to see he wasn't quite as big as they'd imagined and he was only a human sized figure. Oh well, he was an uncompromising warrior nonetheless. Yarrick was the man credited with withstanding the Orc assault on Hive Hades for a significant period of time. This assault brought the Armageddon War to a new level of brutality. The Orcs had already sacked two Hive cities, and Hades stood next in line. The Imperium, in desperation, would launch virus bombs, devices not used since the time of heresy against the Orcs. And even though hundreds of thousands virus of Orcs would bombs? perish, it wasn't enough. Garsgull wanted Hades, and he would direct the assault himself. He tried everything he could think of, growing ever more frustrated all the time. But all his traditional assaults would fail time and time again. Eventually, he summoned his weird boys to use their wag consumed mines to blast a psychic storm at the hive. 
Consumed by bones. madness, the human defenders fell apart, but still the humans couldn't be defeated. The orc flyers were ripped apart by anti-aircraft fire, tunnel fighters cut their orcs trying to advance underground to pieces, and human suicide assault squads took down the immense orc gargants. All this would be Commissar Yarrick's doing. Gazgul by now had become fixated and obsessed with bringing down Hyde Hades, his vision and judgement clouded by the frustration and needing to bring it down. While That's still battling happen, this bitter assault, he would direct an orc horde to assault another hive city, Acheron perhaps in the hope to divert resources away or gain a victory and rally his troops to greater energy. But then, the worst possible development for the Orcs. Right. Orbital bombs rained from the sky as roaring space marine thunderhawks would sweep the, down into the planet. That the blood, blood angels, angels it is the blood angels. and salamanders. The Emperor's chosen warriors were here to defend Armageddon. Gazgul was still so blinded by fury in his efforts to defeat Yarrick and Hades, he was unable to think with clarity enough to counter the arriving space marines. He, he would think. throw everything he had to take down his obsession, breaking in the blast doors of Hades in a final rampage. The space marines would be too late to save Hive Hades, its citizens massacred. With Gazgul's numbers now yeah. both severely depleted and loosely scattered across the planet, he consolidated his last reinforcements to a new hive, Tartarus. The planet stood at a crossroads, even with the arrival of the Space Marines. They would deploy even as the Orcs began their assault with mechs, stompers, and even Gorkonauts. The battle, though, was not in the Orcs' favour, but then Gazgul himself arrived. The Orcs could taste things were turning for them, but then just as quickly as he arrived, he'd gone. Chatter spread quickly through the orcs that the war boss had fallen. They began to waver to break, and the Imperium crushed the remaining orcs, driving them from Armageddon. But the orcs thinking Gazgul had fallen in battle was not so. Gazgul was, was wrong. wrong, but he did disappear from the battlefield. Where'd he go? Rumors spread that the hand of Gork had plucked him from the battlefield and his detractors would say fled, usually to be met with a swift headbutt from a nearby orc putting them in their place. However, you know, it did bad. happen. Gazgul had escaped. After Armageddon, Gazgul did not rest. As with most orcs, defeat is not really a thing. It's just a stumble, a setback, a chance to have another go. This was the beginning for him in his larger journey, a plan of Gork and Mork. Yarrick recommended the Imperium hunt down this brutal war boss and eliminate him once and for all. But the Imperium assumed him dead or nah. defeated and didn't want to spend you the resources or time to him. locate an orc, they were sure that that was the last they'd see of. Yeah. This was a grave error of judgement, as is often the case with most things in the Imperium. Like always. To the Imperium's mind, his warg had failed, and therefore, even if he did survive, Orcs would not look upon him for leadership Dude, with his energy deflated. After losing a battle, while Orcs will happily try try again, they'll often topple their leader as is their natural order of things. But not so with Gazgul. While he uh, may Gazgul. have had to defeat several uh, challenges in uh, brutal fashion after he regrouped with various Orc tribes to remind them just who he was, he would begin gaining new followers again. Curiously for an Orc, not just with his actions, but with his words. To him, the invasion Ooh. of Armageddon had been a starting big man speak testing big words of the enemy to find their strengths and, and their weaknesses. A large scale intelligence plans. gathering, orc style, leaving millions dead and burning cities in its wake. And in this, they gained much useful information. Now Gazgul knew about Imperium strategies. He would regroup, rebuild, and restore his prophetic warg. He would reveal to his fellow orcs. In order to destroy your enemy, you must know him. To the orcs, this is about as profound as it gets, wow. and their spirits would reignite. The second oh, coming He's of Gazgul right. Thracker. Gazgul. Alrighty, guys. Well, that was Luton. Oh, nice. Orcs. War is life. Rah! Now, guys, I... I feel like we learned quite a bit about these uh the, these guys. Yeah. Yeah. We learned some physiology. We learned about how they even politic a little bit. And then we learned about the war boss. 
Nazgul Thaka. Ugh. Guys, these orcs are freaking crazy. I still... I want to see them fight the Tyranids. Because that, that has got to be like the ultimate battle of attrition, guys. I mean, one collecting biomass, one not... Well, actually, that's one thing I feel like he maybe didn't speak on, is how long once the orcs die for the spores to become active again, for them to heal, rebuild, new generation. Would that even be possible against the Tyranids? I mean, I obviously, I don't think the Tyranids are, you know, absorbing the spores, but when they send up those big Titan towers and it sucks up all the water and they got the biomass pool, once it drains the water, would when the spores come with it? I don't know. I don't know. But guys, like I said, Luton 09. We're gonna be getting into the Imperium of Man here sometime soon for you guys. Just gotta get off work. Would be nice. But with that being said, guys, y'all have a great rest of your day. Be sure before you head out that door, guys, like, comment. Subscribe. We do all those things. They would help me out tremendously. Would be nice though, for real, guys. Uh, we're almost at a thousand. Let's get a thousand, then ten thousand, then a hundred thousand. But we gotta get to the thousand first. But yeah. So guys, y'all have a great rest of your night. If you got anything you want me to watch, throw it down in the comments. And with that being said, guys, peace, love happiness to you guys and always be easy love you guys y'all have a good night